Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Mikey is here, just not here, here. Okay, so this is Amy. Everybody on Facebook, this is Amy calling out. Um, Pastor Mikey is here. He's working with the youth tonight with their praise band. And so we're just filling in for him and just keeping things rolling along. So we want to worship the Lord together. Hallelujah chant.
say hallelujah. Every time I hear a song with the word hallelujah in it, my mind goes back to Africa. When we got over there and, you know, anything you said, they had to translate into their language. Except for that one word, hallelujah. That's a universal word. All over the world, it's translated the same. Hallelujah, which means praise to Yahweh. Praise to the one true and living God in every language just the same. Come on, say it one more time. Hallelujah. Praise to the Lord. Amen. I want to open up a little something tonight. I know it's not really applicable to our church, but it's funny nonetheless. The 20 and the 1. So a well-worn out $1 bill and a similarly distressed $20 bill arrived at a Federal Reserve Bank where they were going to be retired. And as they moved along the conveyor belt to be burned, they struck up a conversation with each other. The $20 bill reminisced all about his travels all over the country. He said, I've had a pretty good life, the 20 proclaimed. I've been to Las Vegas and Atlantic City. I've visited the finest restaurants in New York. I've been to performances on Broadway, and I've even been on a cruise to the Caribbean. Wow, said that $1 bill. You've really had an exciting life. And the $20 bill said, well, how about you? Where all have you been throughout your lifetime? The $1 bill said, well, you know, same old, same old church, church, church. <laughs> We know that's not true here, but it's funny nonetheless. A couple of announcements. This Saturday, we are having our men's yard sale out front. I believe they usually do it under the portico. So anybody that's looking for some manly stuff, they're going to have some for sale Saturday. If you've got any manly stuff you want to donate, you can bring it down and drop it off. Uh, see uh, John Trussler or, or Brian O'Dell. I'm sure he could help you as well. But Saturday morning from 7 to 2, they'll be having that men's stuff yard sale, 7 to 2 here at the uh, church, and then all the proceeds, of course, go to our men's ministry. Also, Saturday is the Wolford House outing. So if you, got, uh, if you purchased your tickets, there's no actual ticket, but if you, if you bought a seat at the Wolford House, meet us at the theater no later than 6 o'clock. I sent out reminders this week, so you should have gotten a reminder uh, to be there by 6 p.m., and then we'll all go in together as a group on Saturday. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be continuing in that sermon series that I started this past Sunday entitled The Armor of God. And uh, this week, I'll be uh, starting to unpack and talk about the different pieces of the armor. So I'll be talking about the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and then the feet covering of peace. So we'll be talking about those three things this Sunday. Also, this Sunday, our youth ministry is having a back-to-school bash, back to school party. So if you've got a young person uh, ages uh, 13 and up that would like to be a part of that right after the service Sunday, they're going over to the fellowship hall and going to have a, a good time, a fun and fellowship. They're going to provide, I think the, the hamburgers or hot dogs or maybe both. They're just asking for parents to bring uh, toppings and side dishes, things like that. So that's Sunday. Now, this coming Tuesday is our senior adult ministry is finally gearing back up again. They've been on a quite a hiatus here since all that started with covid and uh, they'll be starting back up for the first time now in about 16 months, probably, maybe longer than that. Uh, but Tuesday at 6.30, that's for anybody ages 55 and up. And this is going to be under the direction now of uh, Reverend Pastor Joey and Lisa Shepherd. So we're looking forward to uh, our, our singers' ministry starting back again. So if you're interested, they'd love for you to come out. This first meeting is just going to be a meet and greet. So just it's a potluck style. Bring a, your favorite dish, and they'll put it together and have a great time of, of fellowship. So that'll be Tuesday. Saturday, the 21st, men's ministry is having a prayer breakfast. So all men to the fellowship hall at 830. And then Friday, the 27th, Saturday, the 28th, is our annual women's weekend experience. And I think you guys had to forego that last year as, as well, didn't you? Yep, so this is the first time they've had that in two years, and that's a great weekend for the ladies. So all ladies, even if you don't come to ladies' ministry, this is a great opportunity to come out and get involved and get connected and meet some other ladies in the church uh, maybe you haven't had a chance to talk to before. So Saturday, Friday the 27th, Saturday the 28th, Friday night is fun night, and then Saturday morning they'll have breakfast and lunch. And in between those two things, uh, Pastor Joey's wife, Sister Lisa, is going to be sharing the word. So that'll be a great day for, for ladies. Stand to your feet tonight. Let's just open up in prayer and ask the Lord to uh, bless our time together tonight, touch our, our Bible study. Pastor Joni is going to come and conclude this series on the last days we've been in now for, for several weeks and looking forward to 
this, uh, this teaching tonight. But please be in prayer for a couple of, of requests here. There's, of course, several in our bulletin, so reflect on those. I won't I want, um, read those unnecessarily here, but just a couple that I'll, I'll add. Um, some of them may be repeats, but some that are in some pretty serious situations. Benita Bolin, if you'd please uh, continue to pray for her healing. Also, Glenna Berman. This is Debbie Phillips' sister. Uh, they believe that she could pass at any moment. So please pray for Debbie and for that family that God would would touch them and, and comfort them. Pray for, pray for Janet Moore. This is uh, Brother Stanley's sister that was diagnosed with cancer. Also, his brother Randy Moore has got to have open-heart surgery uh, and needs, needs our prayers. Continue to pray for the Angle family, Brother Jim Angle that passed away. We want to pray for, for that whole family. Also, um, Pastor Donnie Weaver was a former pastor at Pulaski Church of God, a state overseer, and, and uh, pastors and other various uh, Church of God's around the, the country here, but he uh, passed away here just uh, early this morning. So please be in prayer for uh, Pastor Weaver's family, his wife, and his children, that God would touch them and, and comfort them. Uh, Terry Alley, if you'd pray for Terry. This is Donna's brother that sits back there in the back. He's a uh, sheriff, Plessy County Sheriff. Please pray for him. He had a, a, an accident, I think, over the weekend, fell uh, off the back of his truck, I believe is what I understood, and, and hit his back and has been in some pretty... Uh, pretty serious pain since then, so please pray for, for Brother Terry. And then also pray for, for Jackie, our secretary. She started feeling bad earlier uh, here in the week, and I guess it was yesterday morning, wasn't it, or, or Monday, whatever it was, to start feeling bad Monday. And uh, they took her to the emergency room and realized something was going on with her heart. The heart rate was really low. They sent her to Christiansburg, Montgomery, and they did some tests and finally figured out whatever was going on. It's electrical, the electrical part of her heart is not firing the way that it should. So they transferred her to UVA. It was the closest hospital they could find with a bed that can do the procedure. And she had to have a pacemaker put in. And that was, was put in today, this morning. And I got a text from Shanda just uh, not too long ago that said that she came through the surgery and everything was a success. And, and hopefully as long as she does well through the rest of uh, this evening and tomorrow, she should get to come home tomorrow. So please pray for Sister Jackie, though. She's uh, recuperating from that surgery today. Anybody else have a, a spoken prayer request maybe that I didn't mention that uh, you want us just to pray about tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer? Sister Sherry? Okay. Okay, Sherry's uncle. So your uncle Fred Gallimore. Let's pray for him tonight. Okay. Betty? Okay, all right. So Betty's cousin in Texas has COVID and and uh, needs a, needs a healing, needs a miracle. Okay, let's pray for her. Okay. 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 This is your your daughter, daughter and her husband. Both of them, okay, Faye's daughter and husband both have had COVID and been in the hospital. Yeah, okay, so I want to pray for them and for you guys as well. Absolutely, okay. Let's remember them in prayer tonight. Anybody else? Rosie? Michael, okay, Michael in the hospital needs, needs a touch as well. Let's pray for him tonight. Anybody else? Okay, this is whose dad? Tanya's dad, okay. All right, so Tanya's dad had a fall. Needs prayer tonight, okay? Let's pray for Tanya's dad. All right, any, any unspoken requests you just want to signify by a raised hand tonight? Amen. I see your hand, but more importantly, the Lord does. Amen. Would you join me in prayer tonight? Father, we just come to you in that mighty and holy and beautiful, matchless name of Jesus. Lord, we bring all of our petitions. God, we bring our requests. We bring our needs, Lord, to the throne of God tonight. 
Lord, I pray, Father, for every one of these folks, Lord, that uh, I've mentioned out loud in prayer. I pray, Lord, for the folks that our uh, members here in our church have, have uh, mentioned their names for Tanya's dad. We pray, Lord, for him. I pray for Michael, Lord, this nephew, Lord, that Rosie has asked for, for prayer for. I pray for Faye's family, for her daughter and her husband, Lord, and for Faye, God, and Tony. I pray, Lord, for health and healing, God, and strength. Uh, Lord, for them, we pray for Betty's cousin, Lord, that uh, is in Texas, God, and battling COVID, Lord, and, and it's just a reminder of, of so many more that we know as, this, as the numbers are on the rise again, Lord, across our country, that God, you would touch, we pray, and that God, you would heal this disease, this infirmity, God, we declare the word of the living God, that with your stripes we are healed, God, and there is, you're no respecter of persons. And you're no respecter of diseases, Lord, from the common cold to cancer to COVID. They are all healed. They're all healed the same way by the blood of the Lamb, Lord. The stripes that you took upon your back, God. You said you sent the Word, and you said the Word healed our diseases, God. And that's what we declare, and we, we proclaim, and we stand on, God, that Word tonight. Lord, we pray for, for Sherry's uncle, God, Fred, that you would touch him, uh, Lord, tonight, and uh, heal his body, Lord, strengthen him, God. I pray for Jackie that's in the hospital. Hospital, Lord, tonight at UVA, that, Lord, you would bless her and, and to heal her, God. And, and I pray there'll be no complications with this surgery, that she'd be able to come home. Uh, Lord, tomorrow is planned. God, we pray for Randy Moore that's facing surgery and for Janet Moore that, God, just got that diagnosis of cancer. Lord, we pray for Donnie Weaver's family. God, would you touch his sweet wife? And, Lord, his children tonight and comfort them and strengthen them. God, bring them peace, Lord. I, I pray, God, for the angles, Lord, for Robin and for Jay. And, and Lord, for all the, the grandchildren, Lord, and the friends, God. I know so many friends, God, and ministry partners. God, touch them and comfort them, Lord, in the, in the passing of Brother Jim. Just bring peace, Lord, God, to that situation. Father, we pray, God, for Brother Terry Alley and Glenna Berman. I pray for Debbie Phillips, her family, Lord, as they're going through this process. God, with her sister, just comfort them, Lord. I, God, you said we can know the Holy Spirit by that title. He would be our comforter, and I'm asking you, God, to, to be just that, Lord, for that family. Touch every need, I pray. God, every name in our bulletin, Lord. All those folks that are watching my Facebook Live, Lord, tonight that maybe have a need in their heart, God, or their life. I pray, Lord, for every hand that's raised, God, in this sanctuary tonight that represent needs, Lord. Needs, God, in this sanctuary. Needs, God, that you promised that you would meet, God. Needs, you promised you would supply, God. Needs that you promised you would provide for, Lord, according to your riches and glory, God, our faith is in you, Lord. Our hope is in you, God, tonight. And we know, Lord, that you are able. You're more than able, God. You're more than enough. You're El Shaddai, God, who's always available and always providing and always moving, Lord, and doing the impossible, doing the miraculous, Lord, in our lives. And we give you the praise for the great things that you have done, Lord. And we give you praise ahead of time for the great things we believe that you will do in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, God, for every one of these needs, God, they be supplied in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for this service. Would you anoint our worship, God, in the band? Would you anoint Pastor Joni as she comes in just a moment and she continues to teach us, Lord, tonight on, on these last days? Surely that's where we are, Lord. That's where we are is in the last days. And our eyes, God, are on the skies as we anticipate the coming of the the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, bless us and be with us and help us, God, and touch us, we pray. Touch all of our children. We think about going back to school. Some of them, Lord, have already started, and some of them, Lord, are going back next week or maybe the following week. Just touch all of our children, we pray. Touch them, Lord, and go before them and make a way for them, God. Provide for them, Lord. Protect them, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, Lord, tonight. And we give you the glory and the honor. It's in that mighty name of Jesus Christ that we pray. And all the church said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the house of God tonight. I'm asking our ushers if they would come and prepare to wait on the congregation tonight as you continue to serve the Lord and worship the Lord through your giving. And we just pray a special blessing upon each and every one of you as you sow into this fertile ground, into this ministry of our church tonight. Thank you as you give. Brother Neil, would you say a blessing over the offering tonight?
bless you as you give to the Lord. If you all will go ahead and stand on your feet. We're going to sing a song that, you know, talks about the miraculous, what God can do. And, you know, we like to remember that when we think about the children of Israel and how God parted the Red Sea, he reminded them that he was the Lord who brought them out of the Red Sea. And we need to be reminded of that. When we face our problems and our situations, we remember that he's done it and he can do it again. I was reading today with my boys in John chapter 1. And we were reading about when Jesus first called his disciples. And we were reading about Philip and Nathaniel. And when Nathaniel was called, it said that Jesus looked at him as he was coming and said, Here is a true Israelite. No deceit is found in him. Wouldn't you love if God said that about you? Coming down toward him and said, There's a true, a true lover of God. There's no deceit in that person. And then before, and then Nathaniel said, how did you know me? And Philip said, before I called you, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathaniel, in my own, own words, was like, that was pretty cool. You know, he saw Nathaniel where he was before he even got there. And Nathaniel was like, you are the son of God. And Jesus said to him, do you believe only because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And in my own words, Jesus was saying, you haven't seen anything yet. So Jesus looked at his heart. He knew where he'd been. And he said, you know, you haven't seen it all. And I believe that for us too. We look at our life and we may think, wow, you know, it, it's really, really good, really, really bad. But we haven't seen all God can do yet. He split the Red Sea, but there's no telling what he's got in store for your life ahead. All right, now we're ready to go. Lord, we worship you, God, and we just pray that you would be honored in this house. We worship you. I pray that you would turn our hearts, if we're not where we're supposed to be, in the way that we think and the way that we move, oh God. Lord, I pray that our worship be, would be pleasing in your sight, that mountains would move. God, that we would set aside all of our worries and all of our fears and just take our time to worship and magnify you, God, because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. And you came along, and you put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you.
still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is to God in the valley Oh, there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again He's the only one who can. Come on, lift your hands and worship all over this place tonight. Somebody just magnify the Lord. Come on, the Bible says all the 
angels and the elders around the throne of God. They're doing exactly what we're doing right now. They're worshiping and magnifying and glorifying that name that is above every other name, Lord. We bless you and worship you and honor you, Lord. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, Lord, who was and who is and who is to come. Lord, we bless you, God. We worship you. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Come on, sing it if you know it. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing that again, hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Aren't you glad you know he reigns tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Are you? Sing that again. You are holy, holy, holy. Sing, are you Lord? Are you Lord God Almighty? Sing, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Come on, somebody sing, worthy, worthy. Come on, somebody sing, holy. You are holy. you just need to remind yourself that he's still on the throne. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing. Hallelujah, cause he reigns for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Sing that again, hallelujah.
there's no other God like you. Oh, are you Lord? Are you? Are you Lord God Almighty? You are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Sing, you're worthy, Lord. Sing, worthy. Come on, just the drums. Sing, you are holy. sing you are holy you are holy holy sing holy are you lord are you lord god almighty you are worthy worthy is the lamb come on play it now you're worthy worthy is the lamb you are holy Somebody worship the Lamb in this house tonight. Just take a moment and worship Him in this place. Come on, open your mouth and bless the Lord, all oh my soul. <laughs> and all that is within me, we bless your name, Lord. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Lord, we bless your name, Jesus. Lord, we bless your name, Jesus. Lord, we magnify your name, oh God. Oh, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. Lord, you are holy. Are you, Lord? Are you, Lord? Almighty Lord, we sing, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, you are holy. Lord, we bless your name, Jesus.
in praise and worship you've done a wonderful job and it's just so good to feel the presence of the Lord and know that he is here with us and I want to tell you something studying this series has really been an eye-opener for me I'm a Christian I serve God Sherry I know he's coming but I tell you what when we start really getting down to business getting in our Bible and looking and seeing what the Word of God says, it lets us know that we are close to the end. And that's what our lesson is going to be tonight. It's going to be entitled, The End. Now, we all know what the meaning of the phrase, The End, is. But to refresh our memories, it's just, it talks about a period of time being gone. It stops. How many of you know when you go to a movie, you see that when it's at the end, right? When you're getting ready to get there, you see the little sign that says, the end, and things start happening to let you know that it's about ready to be over. Amen? Well, we're seeing things that are starting to happen to let us know that the end is not far away. And I believe that we've said many times during this teaching in these last few weeks, that we are in the final days. We are in the time of the end. And tonight, I want us all to ask ourselves this question. Every one of us, let's just ask ourselves this question. How often do I meditate and think about the way the world will end? And I know sometimes we say, well, we don't want to dwell on that because we've got more time. And I understand that. I know what you're saying. But, you know, as a Christian, we need to realize that there will be an end. And as Christians, we need to have ourselves focused on a goal. And you know what our goal needs to be? Number one is to make heaven our eternal home. That needs to be number one on our list, that we know we are ready to meet the Lord because that trumpet is going to sound and he's going to come and carry us away and we need to know that we're ready and not only do we need to know that we're ready we need to take all the people with us that we can amen I've said this through this whole series and I'm going to continue to say it it's not just Pastor Marcus and those who are ministers that are to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's called every one of us to minister his word. If you work, that's your mission field. God put you there for a reason, to let others know about Jesus Christ. You may have family that doesn't know the Lord. It is up to us to tell them about Jesus. Amen. And not only tell them about Jesus, but live the life so that when they look at our life, they can see Jesus living inside of us. The Great Commission is found in Matthew 28. It's always been what God has commissioned us to do. And Jesus said these words in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all. Did you see that word? All the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Guess what? God has given each and every one of us a task. And he's told us to go and to tell the world about Jesus Christ. That it needs to be told to all nations. Jesus gave you and I this command when he left this earth. So 
So let's all just stop for a moment and ask ourselves this question. This is your question for you. How serious am I taking this command? Think about it. How serious am I taking this command? Now, God, I don't believe, is telling all of us to get on an airplane and go to a foreign country. Now, some of us, he's told to do that, amen? And when he tells you to do that, you need to be obedient. But like we've talked about before, as soon as we go out those doors, we're on a mission field. And it's up to each one of us to tell others about Jesus. And, you know, I was thinking about Brother Jim Angle, who went home to be with the Lord on August the 1st. And he operated a full-time ministry for 40 years in the United States and in 36 countries. The primary love of the countries was India. And I had the privilege to go to India with Brother Angle seven times. And I thank the Lord for those opportunities. And let me tell you, and I've told it before, but when I first felt the calling to go into a foreign mission field, I wasn't too happy about it. I'll be truthful to you. I wasn't too happy about it. I was scared. And I thought, well, number one, I didn't know how I was going to get on an airplane and fly all that way. And then if I did make it, what was going to happen after we got there? But you know what? I am so thankful for that opportunity. I want you to listen to this. Healing in His Wings Ministry and Global Partners have had 2 million souls come to Jesus Christ. And I, I just thought, because Brother Angle answered the call that God placed upon his life. There are going to be two million people who are going to go to heaven when their time on this earth is over, all because he said, yes, I'm going to answer your call, and I'm going to go and preach the gospel where you tell me to preach it. I tell you, that really touched my heart. Now, I may not be able, and you may not be able to win that many people unto the Lord. We may go to heaven and it just be 10 people. It may be five. But let me tell you, it is worth it to get out there and to tell others about Jesus Christ. We need to let them know. Making disciples has always been the calling of the church. As the body of Christ, it's my responsibility and it's your responsibility to be devoted to to that great commission until the very end. And you know what? None of us know exactly when the end will come, do we? None of us know for sure, but the Bible did tell us that there will be signs. In Mark 13, 32 and 33, Jesus tells us, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. We've been instructed to watch and to pray because Jesus is going to return. We may not know the exact day or the hour, but we can see as time is going on and the things that are happening that we are getting closer and closer and closer. Jesus said to go and to make disciples of all nations. Do you know how many nations there are in the whole world? Does anybody know? Come on, Pastor Adam. I think he's got going into his mind. <laughs> A little bit more. There's just a little bit more. There's 195 nations. And we're supposed to, do we have, yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's the entire world. There's 195 nations. The Bible says that it's going to be, the word is going to be preached where? The whole world. 
There are people out there that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not telling y'all to get on on a plane and go to a foreign field. If God tells you to, go. Amen? But there are people out there that need to know about Jesus. The gospel's not only good, it's not only good news for you and me and the United States of America. The gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is for the entire world. I read this verse last week and a few Wednesdays ago. It's one we all know. But I want us to listen to it again. And we've heard John 3, 16 so many times, and most of us have known it since we were little. But I think sometimes we, we've said it so many times that we forget truly what it means. For God so loved the world, the entire world, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. One thing I remember about being in India, and we were in those mass crusades with thousands and thousands of people. And Brother Angle would get up there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he would give an altar call. And people would start swarming in, I mean, all over, giving their heart and their lives to Jesus. And, and I tell you one thing about it. And we had prayer chains like we had Sunday morning, Brother Philip. And they would come through. And I am telling you, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people come through. And I want to tell you something. I would see them when they first came through. And then afterwards, they might be standing over there. And they looked like a totally different person. And I'm not just saying that. You could see the change that happened to them. And after the, the crusades, they would come up to you. And I, they would be talking to me and I wouldn't have a word, know what they were saying because they were speaking another language. And I didn't know what they were saying. But I could tell you one thing. They were excited. They knew something had happened to them. And they were so happy. And there were tears coming down their face. But there were tears of joy. And you could just see that their whole countenance had changed because Jesus came into their life it was amazing it was amazing to see those people so hungry for God and he said that he, he sent his son for the whole world that this whole world would be saved there's not a single tribe tongue or nation on the face of the earth that will not be affected by the gospel of Jesus Christ because the Bible tells us that the good news is going to go to all nations. Everyone is going to have the opportunity to hear about Jesus. Being a disciple is a follower of Jesus and that means being a part of a mission to spread the gospel. And in the modern day that we live in, it's getting more and more popular to keep your faith to yourself and not to push the gospel on to other people. And we are living in that day and time. Amen? Where, where the, you just feel like you have to be very careful what you say, how you say, when you say. And I know we need to have watch. But you know, there's a world out there that needs Jesus. And I want to tell you, I've told you all this before, but my grandmother, my mom's mom, let me tell you, that woman, if you were in the grocery store, I don't care where you were. Now, she wouldn't get up in front of church and speak like this for nothing. You couldn't pay that woman. She would never do that. She wasn't one of the, and she wasn't a talkative woman. She was very quiet and reserved. But let me tell you, 
When she felt like she needed to witness to somebody about Jesus, she witnessed to them. And she didn't care where she was, and she didn't care what anybody thought. And if they'd have put her in jail, she wouldn't have cared because she was going to tell others about Jesus. And you know, that's what we're commissioned to do. We should be telling others the good news of Jesus Christ. Regardless of whether the world approves or not, you and I have to do what God has commissioned us to do. In Galatians 2 and 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Aren't you glad that Jesus Christ is living inside of you? And because he is living inside of us, we need to get excited about that and go tell somebody else. Amen? We really do. And I don't care if you've been serving the Lord 40 or 50 years. You still need to be excited about Jesus. And we still need to go forth and to let others know about him because we all have a responsibility. You know, some of us may be sharing the gospel in, in a remote jungle. There's people out there right now, Brother Philip, that are in foreign countries risking their life to tell others about Jesus. And you know the reason they're doing it is because the passion that's in their heart. They're so full of the Lord, they, they say, I'm going to share it with somebody else. There may be others that are sharing the gospel locally, and that's great too because I tell you what, Things that are happening that we never thought would happen in our area. And I'm not going to get into it too, it too deep. But the school situation and things that are happening that we would have not ha thought would happen. We need to stand up locally and be a voice for Jesus Christ. Amen. And let, let this area know that we stand for Jesus. And there will be others that will tra be trained uh, to go to areas where people don't ever go. You know, there's some places where people don't, it's just very barren. But there's people out there to say, I'm going to go there. God may ask you to go across the street to your neighbor. But you know what? That is still the mission field. Amen. The end of time is coming, and each one of us have a responsibility to faithfully do our part. The gospel of Jesus needs to reach the entire world. And our prayer needs to be, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? We need to be crying out to this world. How many of you have heard that song? Gonna, I'm going to read a poem first, and then we're going to play that song. But people get ready. Jesus is coming. But before we play that song, I want you to listen to this poem. It's called, Ready or Not, Jesus is Coming. T'was the night before Jesus came, and all through the house, not a creature was praying, not one in the house. Their Bibles were laid on the shelf without care in hopes that Jesus would not come there. Their children were dressing to crawl into bed, not one ever kneeling or bowing ahead. A mom in a rocker and a baby on her lap was watching the late show while I took a nap. When out of the east there rose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, threw up the sash. When what to my wondering eyes would appear, but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here with a light like the sun sending forth a bright day, I knew in a moment this must be the day. The light of his face 
made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning, just like he said. And though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. And the book of life which he held in his hand was written the names of every saved man. He spoke not a word as he searched for my name when he said, it's not here, my head hung in shame. We don't want that to be us, do we? We don't want it to be anybody. Amen? And we are the ones that will have to do something about it. We're going to play this song. I want you to listen to it. People get ready. Jesus is coming.
It's our responsibility to help people to get ready to go. Amen. And the reason is, is because Jesus is coming soon. And the most important thing that we can understand about the future is that Jesus is coming back. And when he returns to his father, he left the church to carry on his mission. And he sent the Holy Spirit to empower us that we would do what he has asked us to do. The Bible begins with the statement, in the beginning, God created the heaven, heavens and the earth, and ends with God's declaration, behold, I am making all things new. And one day, Revelation 7, 9 and 10 is going to become a reality. And this is what the word says. After I looked and beheld a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes of people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Just stop and think for a moment and picture this worship that we're hearing about in the book of Revelation. Just think about it for just a moment. That's going to be a reality one day. You know, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. And with God on our side, victory is assured. We're going to see victory because we're serving Jesus. And how many of you have heard that song that says, Victory is mine, victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, because victory is mine. And you know what? We need to let the enemy know that. Victory is ours in Jesus. Amen? Romans 8 21. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Aren't you glad that you're with Jesus and that he is on your side? You know what? We need to remember that we're going to see things happen. We're going to see, we're going to, there's going to be all kinds of things that happen here in the end. But we have to understand that God is completely in control. Amen? We need to understand that. So we need to pray, we need to go, we need to share, and we need to rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to say, God, use me in these last days so that I can help others. So when the rapture takes place, I can help someone else go. We're going to listen to another song. And it's called, If You Can Use Anything, Lord, You Can Use Me. You're going to come back? Yes, y'all come on back. We're going to. And what I want you to do tonight, if that's the prayer of your heart, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I want you to stand to your feet. And as they sing this song, I want that to be the prayer of your heart. If that's how you feel in your heart, I want you to worship, and I really want you to sing it and say, Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. And one thing I want us to realize tonight, God may not call you to go and, and preach a message to someone or to stand up here, but we're all called. We all have a mission. And there are souls out there that need Jesus Christ. And he's commissioned us to go into the world and to preach the gospel to every creature. 
We're all responsible for that. There are souls that need Jesus Christ. We don't want anyone to die and be lost. Amen? We want them to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. So if that's your prayer tonight and you know this song, sing along with, with our praise team. Go ahead, Pastor Amy. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. sang that song that we meant that here's my hands Lord here's my feet wherever you want me to go whatever you want me to do and let me tell you something when you pray that prayer mean it from your heart I prayed that prayer one time and then the opportunity came to go to India 
And Sandra, I was ready to back out. I was scared out of my mind. And I thought, he really wasn't speaking to me. He must have been speaking to somebody else. Whatever God asks you to do, be willing to go and do it. I'm so glad that I was obedient to the Lord. And my prayer right now is, Lord, take my hands, take my feet. Wherever you want me to go, I want to listen to your voice and go and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to tell others about him. And let's make that our prayer. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Here's my hands, Lord. Here's my feet. Speak through me. Bow your heads for just one moment. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your house tonight. And Lord, let that be the prayer of our hearts. Here's my hands, Lord. Here's my feet. We give ourselves away to you tonight, Lord, so that you can use us. There are souls that need you, oh God. And help us, Father, to have that burden and that love for those that don't know you, God. Put that passion in our heart, God, to go and to tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. That you gave your life on Calvary. That any of us could be saved and give our heart and life to you. And that one day, we could go to that eternal home called heaven. Thank you, Father. Touch each one of us here tonight and those that are watching by Facebook Live. God, stir up the gifts that are inside of us that we would go and use them to win the lost for Jesus. The end is close and help us to realize that and help us to work while it is day. For the night is coming when no man can work. We love you, Father. We thank you for this series, Lord. And let each one of us open our hearts to you and let your will be accomplished. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all of his children said, Amen, amen. You can be seated for just one thing, moment. And thank you, Pastor Amy and the praise team. I wanted to end with something to make you stop and think about this series. And you know how I like to end with something sweet. And so I prayed about it and nothing came. Did they ever, have that ever happened to y'all? And I'm getting closer to it. And I said, Lord, we're getting closer to Wednesday night. And I, I need a little help here. And this is what he gave me. Now, you may laugh at this. This is made up, so it's, I'm sorry if it don't suit you. Well, forgive me. Church. Wait a minute. Come up here, Jack, first. Come up here. I'm not going to do anything to you. <laughs> Just stand there and hold that. No, hold it like this where they can see it all. Okay, you see it? Church. The end of time is close at hand, and it's nothing to snicker about. Twixt you and me, payday is coming soon. And those, who are, those, who, those of us who have been saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we're going to our heavenly home that's far beyond the Milky Way. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay. So, tonight, I want you to come up here and get you one of these and keep it. And then get you one of these little candy packages and you can eat it. But just remember, okay? Praise the Lord. We want to be ready. And we want to help others be ready too. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for coming tonight. Come up and get your stuff.